Hey guys, I know it's Kevtech here bringing another video on information technology. Hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to make a quick video. I want to go over um, SharePoint and SharePoint admin and just a couple of things on SharePoint. I didn't make a video on SharePoint before, but I didn't go like too granular with it in depth a little bit, but I want to do that in this video. Obviously, if you need to make sure you know what to do, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this with me doing admin stuff related to Office 365, let me know. I do want to cover compliance and a bunch of other stuff. Just let me know. Okay, so let me share my screen. Uh, this is not going to be a long video. It should be short, sweet to the point. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. All right, so I'm here. I'm at SharePoint Admin. Obviously, you need access to this. How does that work? If you go to office.com, um, tell you real quick, uh, explore all apps, and I logged in with my account. It keeps, keeps logging me into my other account for some reason. So let me do that real quick. There we go. We click on admin, users, active users. Uh, there's a bunch of accounts here. Kevin Pornario is my account. Licenses. And I have a, a business license. And I have all these other admin rights stuff here. So if you go, all the way, uh, I'm a global admin. So SharePoint plan is right there. And a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, and you need to have access to do certain certain admin right stuff. I'm global admin. Global admin basically means I'm have access to everything, right? So just wanted to show you how that works. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to where SharePoint Admin Center, right? We're gonna go to active sites, right? Just for today, we're gonna create a, a site and we're gonna call it test. So here it gives you the option: like, do you want to make a team site? Oh, do you want to create a communication site? So typically the one that I used to make when I worked in my other job, I would create the team site. So you create a team site and it says, what, what do you want the site name to be called? So I'm going to call it Tess just for, you know, just for, I guess, for shits and giggles, just to, you know, just to give a site name, right? Because we're practicing. It says, who, who do you want the owner to be? So typically, um, if you work in a job environment, uh, you would talk to whoever wants to site. Like, do you want to be the owner or do you want IT to be the owner? But typically the way we do it is we make the site owner, the person that wants the site created, and then we manage it on our end on the back end, if that makes sense. If the, if they want us to make changes, but they, they're the site owner, so they could make changes too if they like. So I'm going to put my name in there, uh, English. Then here it tells you like what, what members do you want to add to your site so they have access to the site. So they'll, so they'll get an email by default. That they're oh welcome to the site or whatever right so I'll put David in there and then here you click on it and it tells you do you want to make him a member or do you want to make him an owner that's entirely up to you if you make him and it says right there on the left hand side if you make him a owner he has full control of the site theme permissions settings etc cetera, etc cetera. you make him a a member he can only edit and view the site that's it including files lists and navigation so typically what we do is we keep them as a we keep them as a member and my other job. Um, in my other job, we we would we would actually um, have another person as an owner. So we'll have two owners. We'll have uh, the owner of the person that, that wanted the site, and then we'll have another one just in case the other person's not here or they they go on vacation or something, or maybe they get terminated or something. We don't know, right? So we'll have two owners for the site. So depending on your work environment, in work work environment, you may have two owners or one owner. So I'm gonna hit finish. And now it's gonna to try to create that site. And obviously it's giving me a survey right here. So, okay, so do you, is the site, the site should be created now. And you see like the site is right here. So if I click on it, uh, I could click view site. I can add team members on the right-hand side. I have activity. So there's like the, the activity and, you know, and stuff here as well. Members, site owners, site admins, site visitors. There's people that can only view the site. They can't really edit it. So it's entirely up to you how, what, what access you want to give them. And so let email the people outside of the organization email this team, send copies of team emails and events to team members. Don't show, don't show team email address in Outlook. So if you click on email, right? It's probably not gonna work because I don't have Outlook. Outlook is there, but I don't think it's gonna work. Um that's fine. So then here you have the owner, it says owners at teams. Now, if you want access to the site, 
you go to this view site, that's the only way to access it. Or you could you could send copy and paste and send this uh URL to somebody, right? And then this is where where it gets very interesting because you have news files, right? That's fine. Skip that for now. Um, you could create stuff in here. So like you want to create a new post, a new page, a new site. You want to add documents here, you can presentation, you can't, and then you could share it with your colleagues, which is why we, we create a SharePoint site just to share with other people. But then you can also create these sites. So then you know how we have Dropbox, we have box.com, and we have all these other third party tools that we share or sh um, share file, for example, because I use share file in the past. Instead of doing that, you could just you could just create a site and then you're you could just uh share this link with someone outside your organization and they could put a document in here. You guys could, you know, obviously collab and make documents together. And that's the reason why we create these sites, if that makes sense. So now you hit new, you know, all these things over here. If you do page details, it will give you more information on, on the site. So like you see page details is properties. It says all oh, this other information says members here on the right hand side. Who are the members? He's obviously David's actually a member, he's not an owner. And then if you want to get more granular with this, like super granular with this, right? You do site permissions. And the site permissions are right there. You want full control. Who's the full control? Test owners. Um, and then you have over here, change how members can share. You could change the settings right here, right? Site owners and members can share files. Site owners and members and people with edit permissions can share files. And it says allow access, allow access requests. So it gets very granular here. And then if you want to go more into that right here, you can look at site usage, which will tell you like the usage of the site and who's been visiting the site uh, and just in more information about the site. And if you want to go back to the homepage, you can. And I'm on I'm I'm on a regular homepage now. I'm not I'm not actually on the I'm actually on SharePoint Drive. That's it. Now I'm back on the test drive. I'm back on the test site again. So I'm gonna close out of this, right? I'm gonna go back to view site again. And here you have the option to share it. So like if I want to share this site with someone, I can. So I'll do share page. And then I could add their email address here. So like I could put here literally my email address, Kevin Lapornario63 at gmail.com, right? That's my email. It says this link won't work for people outside your organization. So it's com it's complaining about it because this person is not is not an Office 365 user. This person is someone from a Gmail account. So people with the link, people in KevTech IT support can view this link, but people that are not, that are people, it's like people you choose. So if I change this to something else, if I change it to people you choose, Inside or outside the organ, outside of Cat Tech IT support, and I put can view and I hit apply, and it says here Kevin's outside your organization. It should be it should be able to work now. So if I do send, right, and it should send a link to Kevin Apornario, right. So now if I pivot over to my Gmail account, which I'm going to do right now, um, and I go to, and I go to my Gmail account. And you should, I should see an email. I should see something in my Gmail account. If I see absolutely nothing, then that means I didn't work. But what I could do is, I could do is, I could go back here and do share again, share page. And I could, and I put, I put Kevin Aparnari here, right? So my name should pop up here. And it looks like I finally received a link. So I'm going to go and put it on the, on the screen that I'm sharing right now, right? So it's here, it says here, share with Kevin Aparnari. And I click open and it should allow me in. So now I'll have, now I'm as, I'm here logged in as Kevin Aparnari with my Gmail account. So it should be my Gmail account, but it looks like it opened as, as Kevin Aparnari, which is fine. It's totally fine, but it works. So this is why, this is why sites are important. So I'm going to close out of that, close out of that. Um, and this is why we use sites, if that makes sense. And then it, it gets very super granular. Like if I go to, I did site permissions, right? I did site usage, I did site, in, site information, right? And it tells you more information. You can rename the site, site description, private, only members, private, anyone in the organization can join. You know, like you could you could do a bunch of stuff here. You could change the look of it too, if you like, you know? It's entirely up to you. So this is this is why it's important that you understand how SharePoint works. And then that's how you create sites. So if we go, if I go here, right? 
close out of this and go to create. Then again, over again, I get, can I create the one on the right hand side? I'm going to create one on the right hand side. And I'm going to call this test two and it should be valid. And I'm going to put Kevin upon Nario again or my name again. Um, which, by the way, this is a real email address. So if you want to email me, I may respond to you. That's my email address. Um, so that's called test two. And I'm going to click on that one. And I'm going to view sign. This one is not the same as the other one. You see, it looks completely different. <laughs> it's a little more different, right? So same thing. It has documents, pages. This is more like to collab with other people. And this is more like more in depth. It has more options here. So. So people are going to get confused, like, oh, what's the difference between this, and this one and that one? So if you go to it, it actually tells you when you create it. It tells you it creates portals and subject-specific sites, engage thousands and thousands of viewers, a uh, few content authors and many site visitors. Um, and then this one's a little different from that. This is to track and stay updated on projects. And then this one's actual portal. It's an actual portal that you create. So these are two different things, right? Just don't want you to get confused. And the site access is right there again. Um, settings is right there again. And then you have site permissions in there. You could change the permissions. You go to advanced permissions. We go to that. This is where it gets very granular. Um, and you see right there, test owner, test members, test visitors. If you want to grant permissions, you can. So I could I could put here, I could put here somebody if I wanted to, like Kevin Pornardi will show up by default. That's me. And I put share and it would it would actually share a link with me. So it says share with Kevin Pornario. And if I go to office.com, right, and then, and I'm going to go here to office.com, and if I go to Outlook, and it says it's share with me, right? If I go here, I'm going to leave that open for a second because it's it – should be I should be there. I just added myself, so just give that a second. I should get some sort of email. Um, but also I could do I could do it another I could do it like differently another way. But it says invite people, so I should I should be there. You would think I would be there, so it says documents. Go out of that. Go go back. It gives you it should it tell it should tell you what the permissions you have. So like this person here has full control edit. That's what I have. I didn't get an email for some reason. Not sure why. Maybe maybe it's a bug, but I should have got an email, which is fine. Totally fine. Not the end of the world. Um but yeah, that's that's basically what SharePoint is in a nutshell. It's very granular because what you, you're gonna have to like pivot over to sites to sites. I'm gonna stop sharing. Yeah, so it's very granular because you it, once you once you have so some companies they're very organized. Um, they have they have sites that are just one site only and they make sense. But then you have other companies that they have a site within a site within a site. Like, man, what what, what is this? Where the hell do I change the permissions? Right. And that was me and my other job. My other job, like two, it was too damn like, you know, too many permissions on top of each other. We think about sites, we think about NTFS, like share drop permissions, like me sharing a folder, right? If you have a folder within a folder within a folder, it gets super complicated, right? So the way I did it is I would go to the person that's in charge of the site and I would have them share the site and make that, make that person a member only. That's the easiest way of doing it. If you try to change it within a site, within a site, within a site, it gets very complicated. You have to know what you're doing. That's, that's how I, my previous job was like, that was multiple sites within each other, if that makes sense. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out. I hope this makes sense. Uh, and with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. Obviously, if you are new to my YouTube channel, rate, comment, subscribe, follow me. Follow me on Discord. I have a free Discord. If you want to do a call with me, I do coaching calls. You can book a call with me. It's in the description of the video. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful Saturday. Take care. Peace.